left, right. Today's episode could be a tough topic for you because we're talking about the Middle East. <laughs> what we're talking about today is, uh, is the Middle East tricking you? That's a bad boy. Sorry. Is the Middle East tricking you into liking them? If you followed uh, FIFA lately, do you know what's going on in the Middle East, the construction projects? What do you know about the Middle East and how do you know about it? Where, what is your media source? Is it social media? Is it the news? You're reading the paper? Have you visited the Middle East? Well, we're going to dive into it in this episode. So uh, I hope you can stick it out. I hope you don't judge me on uh, my opinions too much. And I'll see you on the other end. Thanks for joining. This is Sip Talk. Grab a drink and enjoy. <laughs> Cheers. Cheers. All right, we are live. Welcome to Sip Talk, episode 232. My name is Justin Julio, joined... Well, I'm out of practice today. Joined by James, the Bosnator Boswell, philosopher, philanthropist, philanderer, philatelist, a man of a high pH. How's the acidity? Basic. Basic, uh, because you are of a high pH. So we uh, got a little bit of a late start tonight, which means I got a couple of drinks in front of me staring me down. How are things uh, going with you, and what are you drinking today? I am back on the PBR train. Mm. PBR. That was the first beer in my fridge that I reached for. And I'm like, all right, cool. This all is right. what it is. Very nice. I've uh, I got a beer from the tap. I got a Sam Adams winter lager. And then I've got a. Uh, you already a killed off the Oktoberfest keg? Yeah, Oktoberfest is gone. I refreshed both of them actually just before Thanksgiving. I got a glass of scotch here, heavy pour. Um, Are they was, the uh, pony kegs that you got in there? They're, they're one sixth of a, of a keg. Yeah, so the tall, skinny ones. Yeah, exactly. Um, so, which are pretty big. They last, there's a lot of beer in there. Um, so we got a lot we got to cover today, including the answer to the trivia question that we completely missed in the last episode. <laughs> uh, and uh, just real quick, uh, I'm curious, how was your Thanksgiving? Oh, Thanksgiving was good. Uh, it was just me, my two roommates, and my friend who lives like a couple, like only like a mile away. Yeah. And uh, we ordered. We got basically like a pre-made Thanksgiving dinner from the grocery store where all we had to do was just throw it in the oven to get it back up to temperature. Mm -hmm. um, and yeah, we had uh, we had some food. We watched some football and we played a bunch of pool. I have no doubt that you guys played a bunch of pool. Uh, and then the, uh, the next day I went and got myself a TV for my garage. So the garage is like uh -huh. continuing to transform into a good hangout space. Moved a couch in there. Nice. So you took advantage of the Black Friday. Very very nice. Yeah, Fifty inches for two fifty. Not too bad. That's oh, that's a really good deal. Um, that's a really good two hundred fifty bucks. The price of TVs are coming way down. Mm -hmm. uh, that is cool. I like to buy them used, but I have I have a lot of TVs because I closed the real estate office. So <laughs> there's a lot of screens in my in my house. Um, uh, interesting to see you took advantage of the uh, the catering option. A lot of people did that this year. Uh I. I did wasn't not really like catering. That's, I guess. that's I think. catering. That's catering. You ordered the food. That's that's catering. As far as I, I'm concerned, I uh, I thought we were going to have a few more guests. We got Rosh, who is uh, in the shadows here. Um, Rosh, he swung out. Get, he had, no, he was sick. So we we ended up we had uh, we had uh, two turkeys. I did one fried turkey, one baked turkey. We had uh, we had. Pernil, which is roast pork that was brought. I didn't have to cook that, luckily. And we had a, a gazillion sides and cheeses and desserts. So uh, we had a lot of food. I spent the majority of the day in the kitchen and then uh, in the evening down at the bar. So that was uh, that was nice. At any point during the day, did you lay spread eagle on your back in front of the screen snoring? Uh, no, I did not. I did not. I did not eat that much. I did not eat that much. <laughs> um, so... Look, we got a chance of deed. We got to we got to move uh, we got to move this podcast forward. First, I need to answer last week's trivia question. 
Okay. I, the week, well, not last week. We actually, we took a little pause for Thanksgiving for the holiday. Cause that's on a Thursday. Our, uh, a time to record is on Thursday. So the question the week before was you have a reservoir. It doubles each day with water uh, over the course of June, July, and on August 1st, it is completely full. There's a lot of tributaries, uh, you know, there's heavy rainfall in the area, which is why it doubles. It fills at a rate of doubling. The question is, uh, at what day is that reservoir half full? Well, you the probably day before. You probably got this because one, you're, you're good at math and philosophy. But the answer, if it's doubling every day, most people would say, uh, you know, halfway from the beginning to the end. But no, it, it because it's doubling, the day b- before it is completely full is when it is half full, uh, and then obviously the day after that, it would be it would be over overfilled. So I got a good trivia question. I'm going to uh, I'm going to bring up um, later on in this uh in this episode however i've got uh i've got one because i feel like we missed a week and i want to give people a, a reason to listen to us um I, I got one i'm going to give you the question now and i will give you the answer uh at the end of the episode so the question is and you you may be able to get this one don't answer it james uh but i'll let you guess at the end d scepter the famous magician claimed to be able to throw a ping pong ball so that it would go a short distance, come to a dead stop, and then reverse itself. He also added that he would not bounce the ball against any object or tie it to anything. How could he perform this feat? Deceptor claimed to be able to throw a ping pong ball a short distance so that it would come to a dead stop and then reverse itself. Um, this is really easy. <laughs> uh, all right. So we'll answer that question later on in the podcast. Uh, today we are, what is our title here? Our title is, uh, our Middle Eastern countries buying your opinion. A lot of stuff going on in the Middle East. Uh, we are, we are skirting the topic of, uh, Israel and Hamas. We're just, we're talking about the Middle East kind of in, in general, the UAE. Um, James got a long list for us. I, you know, we are, and, and, and we, I try to avoid kind of public judging and, and judging of, of others and, and uh, of cultures and things like that, especially on this podcast, because uh, we have a wide audience of my mom and uh, um, one person on Instagram. So uh, I don't want to publicly judge. However, there is some crazy stuff that's going on there. And, and it's all perspective. You know, you and I look back on our, our, our current selves you know, as our future selves one day, and we'll probably have done or will be doing some things now that we're just like, that was absurd. That was, that was really dumb. And, and, you know, we have a great deal of distance separating us from the Middle East. Um, but there's two things, there's distance and time. And, 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 and when you look through that scope, things can look really funny. So we don't share that culture, not so much across the United States. Uh, but I think some of the things we'll talk about will raise an eyebrow with most people. Yeah. um, And this topic was inspired by a debate I had with somebody who, um, who has family that lives in Dubai and and travels there occasionally. And I've tried to convince them like, stop doing that. (laughs) And let me guess, they come back raving about how great Dubai is. Um, close, but they had a good time the last time we were there. And my whole goal was trying to convince them, like, these places are not places that you should have a, a high opinion of. <laughs> so you're saying your opinion is wrong. <laughs> yes, that's what I'm saying to this person. <laughs> oh, man. So where do we where do I mean, we start? Where I would you, start you, by saying you, you, you got a good list here. I have I made a little list of my own. I've added to this list a little bit. But where do we start? I want to start by like just talking about the strategy that these countries are trying to use right now that seems to be working actually. Okay, um, let's let's is, set up let's set up the, the strategy though. So imagine you're dealt a hand of cards, okay? And no. This, this listen, how she doesn't they, work. Well, <laughs> I'm going to say they just have <laughs> they have one card. <laughs> they just have multiple multiple suits of it. <laughs> okay. So and that is oil and money. Well, yeah, oil, which they turn into money. But it's what yeah. they're... So, like, basically, you've got 
And we're going to focus on three countries here. And that's going to be Saudi Arabia, the United Arab Emirates, and Qatar. Um, and all three of those countries are spending tremendous amounts of money on various things to try and improve their image in the world. And my argument is just because they're spending all this money to try and improve their image, we need to remind people what their image actually is and what, and, and what they're actually doing well, and say, start. stop being distracted. Like, I want people to stop being distracted by the shiny objects. Well, and I think, I think that's exactly where we are in 2023 is we're talking about the image. So before you could see people posting their vacations to Dubai on Instagram, what did you know about these countries? Most people believe them to be evil, uh, oil countries. <laughs> like, well, yeah, maybe not, maybe not so and evil. Not, but, maybe but not evil, but they didn't like, have, basically they, all people knew about like no, well, that no, area the, of the, the world. Issue, I'm not like, saying that they were evil and they were doing atrocities, but really they were these powerful countries because they controlled the oil. And and when you have a party that's in a great amount of control, most people look at that as as evil. I mean, yeah, I would say that like wielding you know, a great people, deal of power. That, what do you know we, about Qatar? What do you know about the United Arab Emirates? What do you know about Saudi Arabia? You would probably get this list. They have a crap load of oil. They have a crap load of money. And that the countries are controlled by like a small group that's like a family or like some kind of like royalty group that's very small. And they would probably say like they're, they're Muslim countries. And like people would be like, well, like people have to go on the pilgrimage for Islam to Saudi Arabia and and then the, and then probably be like oh Dubai's over there Doha's over there um Mecca's over there and that that's probably about it but people didn't didn't know very much about about them 10 years ago 20 years ago by the way if you guys are watching us on YouTube Facebook TikTok, let us know you're there. Just throw a comment out, say hi, so we can see that. Well, you the reason are. why nobody knows anything, nobody knew about anything related to Dubai 20 years ago is because Dubai didn't really exist 20 <laughs> years ago. Well, where I was going with this was uh, social media and all that we see of them in the media today because of all the money they are spending on certain things. Mm -hmm. And should we start that list? Um, I guess we like we're gonna go out of order since we've been we've mentioned Dubai a bunch of times. Okay, so we can start with Dubai, which um, one theme here is these countries that have made all their money on oil, somewhat recently, have realized that eventually one day that oil money is gone. Like they're not gonna be able to make money from oil anymore. Yes. Now that might the, be the in world, twenty or yeah. fifty or a hundred years, but they know that like their days of making money on oil are limited, Correct. and so like Saudi Arabia and like the and the UAE have started trying to kind of diversify their economies away from just being dependent on oil and natural resources, and so you can look at Dubai and they said, well, we're just going to build this city that we want people to visit. And so, so they become a tourist attraction rather well, yeah. than an oil exporter. Well, that's the, that was that was one of their goals, and yeah. so they basically had this opportunity to build a city from the ground up, and well, they, what they, they built it from the water up. First, well, they had to import the ground. Well, from the yeah, well, from the sand <laughs> up, really. But instead of like building. A city that has like good design and good pub good infrastructure and good public transportation and and like cool things to do. So you take you take a city like like Rome uh, or uh, Tokyo or the majority of Japan, which you can get around on the public transit system. Uh, <laughs> they didn't they didn't build their city around. No, it, they built it around roads. They built they, they built the entire city is connected by these giant highways. And so like it's it's very difficult to get from one place to another in Dubai without a car. Like it's not a very walkable city. And instead of building like cultural things or like museums and other things that have like 
interesting value. Basically, they just like contacted every luxury goods manufacturer and said, would you like to put a store in our new city? And so it's just a Gucci outlet and a Louis Vuitton outlet and, and so on and so on. And it's just like, how off, how, how, how long can you walk around the city and be like, I, I think I would like another $8,000 belt. Yeah, you know, in in Manhattan, we built this Hudson Yards uh, project. They basically built a neighborhood of high rise buildings, and there's a mall. Of course, it's not called a mall; it's called like the shops or something. But they were very high end. This is a very expensive neighborhood, very high end uh, stores. And what happened was they finished the project a year before coronavirus. All these stores opened up, were forced to shut down, and now you have this luxury mall that has a whole bunch of vacancies in it, which is even like Neiman Marcus was there and, uh, and they closed, which insane. Um, um, so uh, the way I describe Dubai to people is it's a city that was built for and designed by people who think that money is a substitution for personality. <laughs> Very, yeah, very, very true. Very so. So the the city doesn't have any rich cultural history. Nope. It, it no. Just what they could have done is they could have built things as monuments to Middle Eastern culture there and made made it a cultural attraction, but they chose not to. And instead, they did things like destroy the ecosystem system of the coastline by dredging up sand and destroying reefs and and like the environment to make like islands in the shape of things. And yep. yeah, and the building, like, for example, the, the, the biggest building in Dubai, the Burj Khalifa, which is like over a mm-hmm. hundred stories tall. Right. So this is an example of like how poor their city planning is, is the hookups for the skyscraper to like the sewage system in Dubai, um, Basically, the sewer system cannot handle the volume of waste that that comes out well, of the Burj Khalifa. Well, no, this is great. Right. So, you know what they have to do with all the waste is like it gets pumped into trucks, and then the trucks drive it away. You can see videos of a huge line of of tanker trucks that are filled with shit. Well, l- listen, <laughs> imagine imagine a leak. So, you know, the deeper you go. In, in underwater, effectively, there's more pressure because there's more water pushing down on you. Now, imagine you're a hundred story building, and I'm sure we have similar situations in, in New York City, but especially out there. So you've got the you've got these pipes that are that are filled with sewage. Okay. I like how people say raw sewage as if somebody was to cook sewage at some point in history. Either way, you've got they could treat it, I guess. You've got you've got sewage coming down these pipes. The pressure in these pipes, the further down in the building you go, must be so intense that if there was ever a leak. Oh yeah, you do not. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> All right. Let's but but basically I just look at it like that's an example of how poorly planned this city was. Was they're gonna build this gigantic skyscraper and when during the planning stage, nobody thought to think like, okay, can the sewer system handle this? Well, and, we, we do a lot. Or of- if the sewer system can handle this, how do we upgrade things to make it so that the infrastructure can handle what we're building into it? We, and they didn't. And then, we, so, we so their solution is, well, we do a lot of building and developing in the U.S., uh, not accounting for the infrastructure. So, for example, we overbuild and then reservoirs can't provide the water. Uh, the groundwater, people uh, building wells, the groundwater gets uh, gets sucked away. Um, and then we have to change and, and, and retrofit the infrastructure afterwards. But we don't do a lot of forethought when it comes to developing in the U.S. either. But, but again, these guys are building a city from the ground up. OK, there <laughs> you would think this would be something that they, they would have accounted for. Right. But again, it's all about projecting an image, which is why you've got like the, you get all these Instagram models paid to go there just to make the city look good. Now, there's also like and I don't want to go into too much detail here, but there's also a whole bunch of Instagram models that are getting paid ridiculous amounts of money to basically be sexually exploited by 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 oil by by oil barons there sexually exploited yeah 
I don't understand because well, sex is not something that you see a lot. You don't you don't even see a lot of skin in the public eye. No, but like that, yeah. There are some Instagram models that are that like have horrible things happen to them over there. Oh, okay, yeah, behind closed doors. Okay, right, yeah, yeah. They're not, yeah. not reposting this online. Let's move. Probably to, not. No. Um, let's move to speaking of. Let's move to Qatar real quick. Okay. Um, because there were reports that they bribed their way to the World Cup last year. Yeah, like it's it. I mean, FIFA wouldn't admit to it because they. Why would they? Because like they don't want to say we were taking bribes, but basically everybody knew that the only reason that Qatar won the World Cup is because they bribed a crap load of people who were voting on where it was going to go next. And I remember this was several years ago. Um, the FIFA produced a report um, when when countries bid for the World Cup. Um, FIFA produces a report that evaluates each host country's bid. And the things that it evaluates are going to be like quality of the stadiums that are there, quality of the infrastructure in the cities, quality of the hotels, quality of a a whole bunch of different things. Right. And and they score each country on a, on a score of like one to 10 um, in all these different categories. And so the bids for 2022, I think was between like the United States, I think like Australia and maybe like Japan slash Korea as like a joint bid. And so when you look in, in Qatar and when you looked at the, the scores on, on FIFA's own report, like the U S Australia and like Japan all had scores in like Comparable. the six and a half to seven to like nine range. Right. Qatar. And then Qatar was like 3.2 and like everything. <laughs> well, remember and, also think about, think about the countries and the people that watch that watch football slash soccer. Um, and the amount of beer that they consume. Uh, the one standout for me in Qatar was that Budweiser, uh, an official sponsor of the World Cup, which is an alcohol company, could not serve beer during the World Cup. Well, time. not only that, it's when when FIFA granted the bid to Qatar, one of the conditions was that like beer sales would happen. Like, they, that is true. Yeah. And then, like a month before the World Cup, Qatar is like, you know what? We're not going to let that happen. Like, we're just no. They, they had that. They had that wild card in their back pocket the whole time. They're and like, so we're gonna wait until everything's set and just pull this. Yeah. At the and last. And so, and then like another example is like there was a Formula One Grand Prix in Qatar like a month ago. Yeah. And I have some notes on this. Huh? I have some notes on this one. Go ahead. And like, one of the criticisms when Qatar was hosting the World Cup is like, why are you going to host a World Cup in a country where it's 120 degrees in, the, degrees in the summer? And so they further accommodated Qatar by hosting in the winter when it wasn't so damn hot. So this Formula One Grand Prix, like a month ago, it was still really, really hot there. Mm-hmm. And the Formula One drivers were throwing up in their helmets from the heat. Uh, I read there was there was one driver that threw up in his helmet uh, because of the heat. Another driver who passed out. Um, supposedly they said the, the cockpit temperature of some of these cars is 122 degrees Fahrenheit. Um, but I also, I also got, I was trying to find the outside temperature because the interior temperature is not going to necessarily, uh, it could be a, a result of, of the car itself. So I got two accounts that the exterior temperature was 88 degrees Fahrenheit and another one that said 104 degrees Fahrenheit. Now, maybe the heat out there feels a bit different, but you could do you could do an event in North Carolina in the summertime where the outside temperature is 104. So I I, I wonder if these are kind of some false attributions of of, of why a driver well I mean that's the driver because these are very intense. Listen, F1 is a very intense sport, even though it may not seem like a sport, but oh, it's it very is. intense because of the G-force and obviously the, the cockpit temperatures. Um, the drivers have to be in tremendous shape to be able to drive the way they do. But listen, when you are when you lose, you look for every excuse that you can, you can think this, of. This, but the thing is, this was not just like the losers. Like, this was practically every driver in the field complained uh, about yeah, it. Everybody, everybody complains about everything these but days. But it's... Again, it's they basically just paid a bunch of money to FIA, which is the governing body for Formula One, to get awarded a Formula One race there. And again, it's just a place where that shouldn't happen. 
Like, yeah. or it should happen on like the schedule. It should be scheduled during the winter when it's not so damn hot. But, but, but be- because these are just pawns in 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 you know what they're playing, and they have so much money to throw at whoever they want because the only cards they hold in their hand are money. And they're throwing this money at these sports to get the viewership, to get the attraction, to get their name on uh, social media, to get to get these countries' names in front of you so you can see what's going on over there and change your opinion of these Middle Eastern countries. Right. Which, we're, again, we're not saying – I said that people thought of these companies as evil, but that's not – that wasn't well. I mean, I'm gonna. I've got some stories <laughs> later on that we're gonna talk about that I'm gonna try and make the case that these countries are evil. Let's 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 make a segue to uh, Saudi Arabia. Speaking of F1, okay. So Saudi Arabia had an F1 race. <laughs> I watched uh, like, this footage. I watched this. Is, this is crazy. A, a couple years ago, and during the race, you could see smoke rising from a city in Yemen that Saudi Arabia was currently bombing. <laughs> During they, had, they had bombed an oil plant uh, over the border, and the uh, it looked like an atomic bomb had gone off. The flames in the sky, the smoke. Uh, it was it was really fucking crazy uh, just to see this in the backdrop of this of this race. Yeah, and and so that th- that's a case where like maybe their attempt at like whitewashing their their public image failed because. Like they, they, everyone's paying attention to the Formula One race. Never mind the black smoke in the background. But um, <laughs> that's silly. Um, but like, also, this one made the news over the last couple of years, where Saudi Arabia started its own golf tour to compete with the PGA Tour, and mm-hmm. they threw hundreds of millions of dollars at professional golfers to get them to join the tour. I think Phil Mickelson was paid something like $250 million. Ins- not just not to not winning anything. Just, no, just we're going to pay you $250 million just to join us. We want your body to be here. Yeah. Yeah. And the PGA basically told all, all of its players, like, if you join that, you're ba- like, we're kicking out of the PGA. But and okay, so, so, hold so on. what the so, Saudis did got, is they just said, you, it, got, you got Saudi Arabia who's got their golf association and they're offering top players 200 million. Okay. Or, or maybe not as much as Phil Nicholson. Some, yeah. Like but, other players yeah. were getting like 80 to a hundred million, okay. which is still now, like now, now you've got the PGA, which is a professional golfers association of America. And they don't have nearly as, they have a lot of money, but they don't have nearly as much money as Saudi Arabia does. And these, and, and, and these guys are being offered way more, to to go to Saudi Arabia, the, the PGA, the, PGA the, the, the amount of money that the, the Saudis were throwing at these golfers, the PGA simply could not compete with. No, like they, if, if the PGA tried to match those offers, they would have gone bankrupt. I, I'll put something in, in a perspective for anybody who's listening. You have golf money, right? Professional golf money. Let's let's say let's say you've got like the NFL, the MLB. Um, Maybe what NBA, uh, NBA, uh, and then and then what? Maybe hockey, MLS uh, and, and hockey. MLS, MLS has yeah. been growing really well. Yeah, MLS probably a little over. Okay, uh, and that, so, so this is kind of a full on scale: NFL, uh, NBA, uh, MLB. Okay, but then you have oil money, which like it's not. You, you need no, a longer arm. <laughs> exactly, you can't compare a professional sport to oil. No, no, you just can't. And the entire because, world runs on oil right now and hen has for the last hundred years. The entire world does not run on baseball. Well, let's com- <laughs> let's compare this one. Like Saudi Aramco is worth over a trillion dollars. That's the state oil industry of Saudi Arabia. That's worth over a trillion dollars. There's no way that the PGA can compete with the kind of money they're throwing around. And so <clears throat> a whole bunch of golfers left the PGA because the money was so much that they're just like, 80 to 100 million that's more than i make in like four or five seasons exactly. like i'll take the risk because like i can take this money and i could pretty much retire and i don't even have to worry about playing in the in the pga anymore they don't want me back fine i've got enough money that i don't care matter. yeah um and basically something and like you had a, a a bunch of golfers stay with the pga um like most notably was like rory mcelroy um mm-hmm. and he spoke often about like how the Saudi tour, like he, he was like, I don't want to join the Saudi tour because I disagree with what they're doing. And he took an ideological stance because 
Which Rory is very could, rare. Which is very yeah, rare, by the way. Rory could have made probably 150 or 200 million dollars by going to the Saudi tour. He passed on that money to say, "I don't want to support people who do things like they do in Saudi Arabia." And which we'll get there. We'll yeah, we will. <laughs> um, we got to move quick here. But again. basically, after like a year and a half or two years of this Saudi tour not making money, because like if you looked at like footage of like their tour events and stuff. The crowds were very thin. There were very few people that went to these. Um, but basically, the PGA decided, like, you know what? We're going to have to merge with the Saudi tour because we just can't afford not to. And so the the Saudis won. They, But not because they were a better tour, but because they just basically they, uh, they bought out, out the PGA. They went with an unlimited well of money. Yeah. Uh, so let's make, this, let's make this transition to some of this human rights and kind of bad stuff that is happening out there. However, first, I'm going to answer the bar trivia question. D. Scepter, a famous magician, claimed to be able to throw a ping pong ball so that it would go a short distance, come to a dead stop, and then reverse itself. He also added that it would not bounce against any object, and he would not tie it to anything. How could D. Scepter perform this feat? James, you threw know it me. straight up in the air. He threw it up. It came to a stop and returned back down to his hand. <laughs> I love these questions. <laughs> I, I, I mean, I, I probably, uh, these are like Mensa questions that, that are for eight-year-olds, which is which is funny. Mensa is obviously very tough questions, but they're like. Uh, I'm pretty sure that Mensa for eight-year-olds would be harder than these. <laughs> no, 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 smart eight-year-olds, man. Yeah, but the thing is, is thinking outside the box. You know, think, so you're thinking, oh, he bounced it against a wall. Oh, it can't be against an object. Fuck, I don't know what it could be. Uh, <laughs> because you're thinking of bouncing. You're thinking because your mind instantly goes to bouncing, and then you say it can't hit an object, but your mind is still stuck on bouncing. I mean, let's be honest. If you go see a magic show, and the magician says <laughs> that, <laughs> and, <laughs> yeah, I mean, is it? <laughs> yeah, like, are you going to be clapping for the magic? I mean, maybe if he's got good delivery, you clap at it because it's a good comedy routine. <laughs> but you'd be like, I just saw the world's shittiest magician. Uh, <laughs> all right, so look, I got to... Like, I'm going to make gotta... the contents of this can of beer disappear. How? <laughs> I've got I've got a really good uh, trivia question. It's going to stump you. Uh, and I ask that people don't Google these things. Uh, and I, I just, for the <laughs> and later, of, I'll make them reappear at a different place. <laughs> yeah, I'm gonna piss, piss the beer out. Um, I ask that people don't don't Google the answers to these questions because obviously, 2023, we can look anything up. But the goal is to challenge your mind and think. Um, and even when I read through the questions, so basically, what I do is I I've, I just search questions all the time. Um, and I've got this Mensa uh, for eight year olds game. Uh, but I always just sit and and think about the question. What's it actually and, called? I'll, I'll tell you off air. All right, okay. <laughs> can't give everything up here because yeah, I can't uh, imagine there's a product no, out there no, called not, Mensa for eight year olds. It's, it's not just it's not just one source because I uh, the 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 trivia question at the end of this episode is a good one. It's not from not from this, but the silly ones um, like this deceptor throws the ball. Uh, they're, they're some of the some of them are just too silly. Um, but we'll. Uh, uh, what what five letter word becomes short when you add two letters to it? What five letter word becomes shorter when you add two letters to it? Short. The word short. Yes, the word short becomes shorter when you add two letters to it. Er at the end. Yeah. So there's. The, I mean, the, those the, to me are funny questions. Uh, that one I looked at and I, I uh, it, it took me about thirty seconds. I was like, oh, duh. <laughs> so, yeah, that, that's why. But that's why these are for. That's why these are for eight year olds or eight, maybe eighth graders. Maybe not eight year olds. Maybe eighth mm, graders. No, I, I think most eighth eight year olds could get this. <laughs> most eight -year -olds smart eight year olds are dumb eighth graders. Um. All right. So let's let's move on. Let's move on to some some. And this is sad. And this is. And again, this is perspective. And. Uh, just kind of outright bad shit, human rights violations. I want to start with Qatar and the 2020 oh, you're, you're... incident at the Doha airport. Uh... <laughs> All right, go for it. This one I have mixed feelings on, actually. But I, How could you possibly have mixed I don't, it's, it's weird. Go ahead. So in 2020, 
I think it was about 10 women were taken off of flights that were about to depart. Like the, the flights on, had boarded. Hold on, let, let, let's back up. Uh, Doha Airport, there was a baby that was found at the airport. A newborn baby. Yes. A, a fresh born baby. A fresh human. And there was no mother around. So what, what did security do at this airport? So what security did at this airport was they went on to every flight that was departing and they took about 10 women off of these flights at gunpoint and basically forced them to go uh, like undergo like pelvic exams by I would imagine like the country's police force trying to find like the woman that had given birth so, now, one, so a couple, couple of things. One, I did not – go ahead. Share your opinion. I'm going to share my opinion because, like I said, I have mixed feelings in this. Um, so imagine you're a woman that is on an international flight and you're just like laying over in Doha on your way from like <laughs> one place to another. Yeah, you're just passing to the airport. You're, yeah. Yeah. Like you weren't staying in Qatar, you didn't go there like as a tourist or whatever. That's just your layover from like yeah. Paris All to right. like maybe, maybe you went Paris, Doha as a pregnant person and left Doha as a non pregnant person. Well, no, the thing is, like, the, the problem is that, like, because well, we'll come back to this. Here, here's the issue here's the issue is that you were escorted off the plane by gunpoint and then you were subject to an unnecessary pelvic exam, which in these Middle Eastern countries, I'll tell you one thing, I don't, I don't think these guys see a lot of naked women. So, I mean, they're certainly not selling playboys at the, at the newsstands in the airport. <laughs> so, um, I mean, it's an utterly dehumanizing experience. It's very dehumanizing. Yeah. And, and, and that's, you're basically treated like, like cattle, uh, but alien cattle that are attacking people. Cause you're right. At, at and gunpoint. so they just forced random women off of airplanes to, have to go through a pelvic exam by not even doctors. Now, to me, I think this was done poorly. This is done very poorly. Now, and this is why I have mixed feelings about this because I, well, I how I don't, can you I have don't, anything but an I'm extremely not, negative opinion on this? All right. I, I think it's terrible. Mike, the question that I would pose would be if you ran that airport, there's a baby found. And I'm not saying what they did was right. Don't don't mistake my my me proposing this question that any indication that what they did was correct. But how would you go about finding out who the mother of that child was? I would start by checking the security cameras. Sure, of which now, there are many have, in airports. All right, cool. So first off, now you you have to uh, pause all the flights, pause all the outgoing flights. I mean, not even because you got time while they're in the air, I suppose. But realistically, if you could, if you could pull a plug. Well, once they land somewhere else, you no longer have jurisdiction. True, true. Um, um, Sasha says DNA test, and like I'm, you're not going to have time for that. So first of you all, you can DNA test the baby, but you're not going to be able to, to, to DNA test all the, the mo potential moms. No, not at all. You do escort them off the flights, and the thing is, they were escorted off the flights by by men with guns. However, here's the way that I look at that is you give a man a hammer, everything becomes a nail. You you give a man a gun, right? And and and, and everybody it doesn't matter if, if 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 you're asking where where the water fountain is, you're you're being escorted there effectively by gunpoint. Now I imagine the gun might be pointed towards the ground if you're asking for the water fountain, but still I uh, not not a good feeling when you're I don't even like being around like the security guards in Penn Station in Manhattan when they, with, with the guns. I'm like, ah, oh, fuck. Well, I, I got to walk by these guys. I don't like this. Like, so here's the thing. Like, and this is, you have to understand a little bit more background here. So in Qatar, having, having sex outside of marriage is a crime. And oh, so. A crime, yeah. Punishable poten potentially by death, I think, but I, certainly I, by jail time. Don't know. Definitely jail time. Don't know about death. And so. The reason why there was a baby that was abandoned in Doha Airport, it was not an international traveler that was on a layover that gave birth to this baby. It was a Qatari woman 
who gave birth to this baby and was trying to conceal it because she knew that the baby was evidence of her committing a crime in Qatar. And so the thing is, they because of because their laws because of their laws it forced a woman to do something terrible in the airport but the thing is the people that they pulled off of these flights were not qatari citizens they were like australian but, but they wouldn't have known in that time it was de- it was dealt with very poorly and i'm not i'm not excusing that at all i just think that if you were running an airport th- this is why i have mixed feelings because this was dealt with poorly right just like when shit happened beyond like, poorly Shit happens in my I an agent blow up at a uh, a management company the other day, screaming at them, telling them they're fucking uh, that are uh, uh, ripping them apart on the phone. They ended up hanging up and they wanted to stop doing business with us. And I had to get back on and smooth things over. And the agent just dealt with that really poorly. Um, whereas I would never have dealt with it that way at all. Um, but whatever. I look uh, at it as like if if I'm a traveler, like. We gotta move and, on. We gotta move well, on. Well, no, no, just like, real yeah. quick. If I'm a traveler and I'm looking at, to go into like I don't know Bali or something, a lot of flights to Bali go like JFK, Dubai, or do JFK, Doha, Bali. And exactly. And, and you and I have talked about not wanting to travel to China or Russia or or through countries that are that are like this. Mm-hmm. And there's a lot of countries, by the way, uh, Malaysia. Uh, I I heard a month or two ago the band called the 1975. You familiar with them? I'm familiar with them. No, you'd like their music. 1975. Uh, the they the band uh, the singer talked about uh, kind of like the politics or whatever, and then uh, and then kissed a male male band uh, mate kissed a another male band mate on stage. I think they got locked up for it. So like there's there's a lot of the shit that is actually happening across a lot of the Middle East uh, and and Asia. So it's you know here in America it's it's a little bit different because because we have the right to free speech, free expression, privacy. We've now decided that abortion is not does not fall under privacy. But we have a lot of rights that that a lot of the rest of the world doesn't have. And even though our country screws up a lot of things, you can look at like a situation like what happened in the Doha airport and be like, I just don't see that that's, that's not, happening that's not, here. Yeah, that's not happening here. All right. Uh, you, you want to talk real quick about the uh, Kefala system? Um, I don't, I, I should have done more research on All it. Right, but the, basically, the, like, the you get these, is, go ahead. I mean, these migrants get like lured into work because, like, they, they, they come from very low income countries. And so they've got all these construction projects and whatnot in the, in like, Dubai or Doha or whatever. Well, that's, and that's so what they, they advertise all these like high paying construction jobs. And then like when the migrants get there, like they seize their passports and then they're just like, um, we're not going to pay you what we advertised. It's, and it's, by the way, you can't leave because we have to, it's akin to slavery because of the type of work. But really what it is, is indentured servitude. You lure migrants in and then they are put in a position where they must work. And this is literally how the majority of construction is done in Qatar is through these indentured servants who are migrants. Oh yeah. Because they owe the company money for various things to get out there. Like the company might well, offer to they're pay for sponsoring, their, they're sponsoring like their trip. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. And so now they have a debt to the company that they have to work off. And the thing is in these countries, you can be arrested for having unpaid debts. Well, let's transition because for the sake of time to the UAE. Where uh, the kafala uh, kafala system is uh, uh, is also in use, uh, you can be arrested. I got a short list here. Uh, you can be arrested as tourists for holding hands in public uh, as an unmarried couple. You can be arrested as an unmarried couple for staying in a hotel room together. In the UAE, you can also be arrested for cross dressing, which, to me, like some of these things, you you. One, you got to do a little bit of research, I think, before, especially going to a country that you know is kind of crazy. The thing is about laws, and I say this all the time. I don't think I talk about it, actually. We haven't talked about it much on air, but I say it in my office to, to a lot of people that nobody ever teaches you the laws. <laughs> like, we don't know. There's new laws that come out every fucking day. We don't know these laws. Mm-hmm. Uh, we learn like the driver rules, right? The, the the laws of the road. But there's a lot of laws that like people just don't fucking know that it's really easy to 
like it's it's illegal to drive with an open bottle in your car. So if you go to somebody's party, you bring a bottle and you drive home and you it's it's you know one third of the way drinking, even if it's in the car in New well, York. If it's in the trunk, I, I think you're okay. I don't, I, I don't know. Um, but but, but there, uh, that's a bad example. That was the first one that came to mind. Obviously, this is sip talk and we're drinking. So an alcohol uh, law comes to mind, which I think I know most of the alcohol laws. I wonder um, why. <laughs> but uh, but there's just a lot of laws that, like, uh, I'll give you another example. Prepaid rent in New York City. Most people come and say, oh, my credit's not that great, but I can prepay three months of rent. Well, guess what, pal? That's fucking illegal. Can't do that shit anymore. Uh, now, most people don't know that law. I got a lot of people that, that try to do it, and a lot of landlords are like, yeah, that's fine with me. He's, his credit's 600 uh, He's got a bunch of late payments. As long as he prepays two months' worth of rent, We'll tack those on to the end of the lease. I'm cool with that. And then what happens is the landlord ends up getting shafted because uh, the guy just like stops paying rent and say, oh, you knew my credit was bad. Mm. And uh, and then has to return those two months. The court ah. they have to return those two months. So, uh, But people don't know the laws. So the thing is when you go to a place like Qatar or, or UAE, uh, you should do a little bit of researching. Well, and like Singapore comes to mind, actually, because their laws are very, very strict as well. Well, we just talked about, uh, yeah, Malaysia. But so. the, the thing about Singapore like, is, like, I think the difference between a country like Qatar and UAE versus Singapore is that Qatar and UAE, the, their laws feel arbitrary. Like, because like in, in Singapore, for example, like you can get the death penalty if you have like a couple grams of heroin. All right. If you're using heroin, you're probably going to die pretty soon, anyways. Yeah, but the the, the point is, like, you, I, I don't think that it's a very Singapore low, it's a very low amount, like, I suppose. No, but but Singapore, the the, the 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 arrests that they do in Singapore just have a different feel than the arrests that they do in like Qatar and UAE. Well, look at the Philippines, where Duterte was saying, "Yeah, I go out and, and shoot drug dealers in the head." Yeah, I mean, <laughs> All right, you look, need to have due process. Just because you think someone's selling drugs doesn't mean you get to shoot them. Uh, yeah, fair enough. I was listening to the news this morning, not this, uh, earlier in the week, uh, and they were talking about some suspect somewhere in like the the northeast, um, and they kept calling him the uh, the suspect or something. Or uh, they were they were looking for the suspect. And I was thinking, well, like, no, you're actually looking for the person who did it. You're not looking for the person you suspect who did it. You're looking for the person who did it. Uh, you suspect it's this person. You're looking for the person who did it. You're not looking for the suspect. Um, but also, we have this person on camera doing it. So, like, we're looking for the person who clearly fucking did it. But just the language that that they use, especially on, on NPR. Um, reverse, uh, rewind a little bit. Some of these laws... A little weird. So sharing a hotel room out of wedlock. So if I was to go being in a relationship for seven years with somebody uh, and rent a hotel room and we weren't married, we'd go to jail. Yep. Hold, holding hands in public. Now, cross-dressing, that to me seems like, oh, we've crossed a slight line, right? A slight line. Cross-dressing is a little less accepted okay even in the u.s uh however the next one dancing in public now you just hear some music you start to groove down the airport maybe with your baby or something like that or you're just you hear some music it makes you feel nice you you do a little jig you could be arrested you could be arrested uh now the chances are, are you won't but you could be no it could yeah it, it very well could happen um or it could be used to extort you. And I can only, we haven't read much. I haven't read much on, we don't, you don't have any notes on this about uh, how corrupt police are over there where they're mm -hmm. just looking to get paid off. But I imagine to, I mean, look, listen, if you're a police officer in Dubai, you're probably not driving a Lamborghini personally. <laughs> your, police, your police vehicle might be a Lamborghini, yeah. but, uh, <laughs> but your personal vehicle, prob probably not. Um, um, here, this one's wild. Like yeah. being accused of rape or in some cases being the victim of rape because being you accuse of somebody of rape, you're a female and you were raped and you go to the police to report it. You could be under arrest for yeah, having premarital, like sex out of wedlock. Had, you had sex out of wedlock. 
Never mind that you didn't want to and that you were raped. You are now in jail for being raped. Mm -hmm. So you're a victim twice over now. Um, Drugs, uh, all drugs out there, and even alcohol, uh, are seen as really bad. Now, you can go to certain private places that are licensed but it's yeah it's, they have like zones in in dubai where you can drink alcohol legally which is just wild but but again but that's public- also just this that's that's the whole the city just saying like you know what we want to appear modern and westernized so we're going to allow people to drink alcohol but only in certain places very, because they only care about image it's very arbitrary and then of course going drunkenly from one place to the next you could of course end up in 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 jail mm-hmm. um uh promoting a charity promoting a charity could land you in jail um posting anything anti uae or anti government on social media so th- theoretically and I, i'm i'm doing my best not to take too much of a stance but some of this stuff is a little silly that statement alone probably probably could could get me in jail well i would say this entire video could potentially well, land us in jail if we were to be there yeah, and then uh, and then also protesting, um, uh, arresting people for having debts, employers making claims of employees having debts to the company after they quit, entrapping the employee, sticking them uh, in the country so they can't leave the country. Uh, um, I heard a story about like a guy was leaving a hotel and like was rude to the 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 front desk person at the hotel. Which I'm not saying it's okay to be rude to people, but. After he left the hotel, the hotel then made a claim that the guest had damaged the room, which he didn't. But the hotel then claimed that he did because he was rude to the front desk person. And he gets arrested at the airport and will not be allowed to leave until he pays off the the damages (laughs) to the airport. Not to the airport, to the hotel room. And so, yeah, like he basically got arrested for being rude, which being rude, shitty thing to do. Totally subjective. Shouldn't get you arrested. Yeah. The being rude is 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 it can be subjective, mm-hmm. uh, and there's it can be objective. Like it depends. On, it really depends on what happens in that in that scenario. I had two instances. One was checking into a hotel. Uh, I got there late. It was raining. It was it was like a five hour drive. Uh, I was mad, <laughs> uh, and you know I made the trip in the Porsche, which. The Porsche is not a great trip for a five-hour drive on the highway. Nope. Now, now it's a nice the, the 911 is a nice car to like drive up kind of through the mountains, but it's not. You don't want to be sitting on a highway because it's small. There's not even fucking cup holders in in this car. And uh, you saw that you saw the new 911 when you were here. Yeah, yeah. You yeah, drove but, into the airport in it. No, yeah. There's not even fucking cup holders in this car. It's not a comfortable car. It's a car built to like drive that you like. Well, feel it, the whole- like it's also got like a harsh trans like suspension, so like it's a bumpy yeah. ride on that oh, yeah. highway. Yeah, it's not. It's not. It's it's not comfort. It's it's built as a sport utility vehicle, right? Like it's it's it wants to do a sprint. It's not looking to do like a a, a thirteen mile fucking jog. Um, I mean, it's like anyway. comparing like um like a I don't know like a Ferrari three hundred and sixty to like a Bentley. Like where the Bentley is not meant to be like sporty, it's meant to be soft and comfortable and yeah, luxurious. And, and, and you shouldn't be driving not... yourself. Yeah, you yeah. shouldn't. Be, you should be in the back seat. Whereas a Ferrari, you should be in the front seat. So either way, I, I got there. I, I said some shit to the, the I, I, and I'm usually really good on dealing with anybody in restaurants or anybody at a counter or anybody that I'm asking to do any amount of work for me because I've been on the other side of the table many times. And yeah. even, even to a degree, like I play a role in an organization now where I am kind of a, a cog or a wheel where I help people all the time. I expect people to be nice to me because I'm helping them. Um, I, given my role, most people come to me very respectful, very respectfully. Um, but I will give you an example of the last week, and we won't dig too much into this. We talked a little bit about it off air. But I ended up at the emergency room, uh, with my little boy over last weekend and I was greeted by the girl at the front desk and uh, she said, what brings you here today? And I thought in, in that split second, I thought, Oh, like not like traveling. That's a weird question to ask in such a congenial tone at the desk of a emergency room, not in urgent care, but literally the emergency room you go where you're having a fucking heart attack. She goes, what, what brings you here today? I said, oh, I got a sick little boy. And she looked at me and she goes, what brings you here today? And I said, I got a, I have a sick little boy. 
<laughs> but in that moment, I didn't realize that she was she hadn't asked a, a clarifying statement like, oh, what what specifically is it? But like, I thought she was like asking me like, duh, I'm telling you. Uh, but it just went fucking downhill from there. I ended up stepping away from the desk because then her bitchy side came out and uh, and and my like, you didn't ask a clarifying statement. I just gave you the same answer because you asked the same fucking question in the same tone. Uh, and then I was just like, all right, I'm done. I need help. <laughs> white <laughs> white flag. I give up. Um, yeah, if I say anything more, I'm just going to come off like that. So it's better. <laughs> that for was because I, I had repeated myself the second time. And halfway through repeating myself the second time, I was like, oh, this isn't the answer you were looking for. But you didn't indicate to me that you wanted a different answer. Like your tone. I, I, I actually delivered it wrong just now because my tone... When I was saying, what brings you here today the first time, and then I said, what brings you here today the second time, there was no difference in tonality from her in that moment last weekend. And uh, and that's where she lost me. She asked the question twice, and the second time, she didn't change anything. So I gave her the exact same fucking answer as if she hadn't heard me, because it's 2023, and every motherfucker out there is on their phones and not paying attention to the real fucking yeah. world. Uh, let me. So now uh, you're in Qatar and you're being rude to somebody. Now you've got a debt to the hospital. Inadvertently, and and I, I, it hit me that I was being rude. I realized I was being rude, and I stepped back and said, ah, "I need some help here." So look, I've got, I got a, I got a cool question. This is my bar trivia uh, for awesome. episode 232. Uh, if you want to, after this trivia question, if you want to add anything else for the topic, you're welcome to. But we only got uh, four minutes left, so I want to make sure we include this. We missed it last time. Uh, and and please don't don't allude to the answer this week. I really this is a, this is a cool question. I don't think I did anything last. Week. <laughs> no, you said. Oh, that's an easy one. <laughs> well, yeah, let's do that. <laughs> uh, why do we board a plane on the left side of the plane? Why do we always board planes on the left side of the plane? And did we? I don't know. Fucking remember if we. Talk, I, I felt like we maybe we talked about this off air about flying first class. If you think you're flying first class and you get on a plane and you go right, do we talk about this? No. Okay, it's not first class. Well, it depends on the size of the plane. No, no, no. It, that's my point. Is it's not real first class. If it's a small plane, you're taking a right and you're calling it first class. It's not real first class. If you get in the plane and you take a left then you can at least consider it first class. But if you pay extra for your ticket, the extra leg room, the special room, the business class, whatever you want to call it, and you're getting on that plane and you're taking a right, you're not getting a real first class experience. Well, again, it depends on the size of the plane. Because if you're flying like a 737, like there is nothing to the left. There's the cockpit. Yeah, well, uh, but that my point is first class is a shit first class. You might, well, pay, yeah. you might pay the extra 800 bucks for first class, but it's not real first class. Now there but are real first of, class doesn't really exist on anything besides like the really big international flight jets, like the seven forty sevens. No, no, there, there are some big planes that 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 cross, uh, you know, from from New York to California or you know any any flight that's that's five hours, four and a half hours plus. Some of these because you got to move planes around. The thing is, you got to move planes around. So they have they have nice planes that fly you know, shorter distances, not 18 hour flights. Now, if you're, if you're getting on a plane, that's, that's, that it's an 18 hour flight, by the way, that's a big plane. It's gotta be a big plane. Cause it's got a whole, a lot of, a lot of fuel. Um, and it's going to have, the, it's going to have the space for a real first class. Uh, Rosh is saying, uh, speaking of Emirates, uh, and planes, their planes are just unbelievable. Well, and that just goes back to our whole point, which is like, they have this terrible history and, 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 and terrible policies and everything, and they throw a ton of money at vanity things to make people forget about the shitty things that they do. My question is, what does the alcohol look like on those planes? Um, I mean, you can't see it. <laughs> I feel like there's got to be alcohol. On, I, I hate flying sober. I hate flying. So doing so sober uh, for me is like is literally like psychological torture. I'm just oh. always convinced the driver's an idiot and the, the, the pilot's an idiot and, and we are going down. Uh, that being said, we got about a, uh, 60 seconds remaining. Anything you want to... Uh... I, mean, I just want people, like when, when you see posts about people in Dubai 
or like uh, a sporting event. Oh yeah, I didn't even talk about like the Saudi like soccer league spending hundreds of millions to attract all these top end players because like their their league is not very good, but they spent hundreds and hundreds of millions of dollars luring some oh, of the top players in the world you, to play there. Like, Qatar, whenever you, you see like a you sporting know, event, you know, you know you know Qatar paid paid to fly fans to the World Cup. They deny it. Uh, but not only did they bribe the officials, but they paid fans to fly in. They paid yeah. people to come in. Right. So whenever you see these sporting <laughs> events or anything that these, these these countries are doing that that looks cosmopolitan or Western or or fancy or anything, just remember that they're doing this to distract <clears throat> you from their terrible record with human rights. Just 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 be dubious and exercise critical thinking. That's all. I want to thank you guys for joining. Don't forget to subscribe on YouTube and all audio podcast platforms. Thank you guys for joining. We will see you next week. Adios. All right, my friends, that concludes this episode. I want to thank you for joining. Hopefully we did not offend too many people, but uh, I want to thank you for making it this far into the podcast, and I will see you next time. Adios. I like PBR. I just got priced out of it.